Hi everyone, it's Fred Fox here, Terry Fox's older brother. Hope you're doing well and all of you are staying healthy. Just want to uh, speak to you today and introduce you to a book that came out in 2020, last year, as part of the 40th anniversary of Terry's Marathon of Hope. You might be aware of it, but I'm not sure. But the book I'm talking about is titled Terry Fox and Me. And again, it came out as part of the 40th anniversary. The book is written in the voice of Doug Allward. And now Doug was Terry's very best friend. Doug joined Terry on the Marathon of Hope, drove the van, and supported Terry along the way when he was running every day. So if I can, I'd like to be able to read the book. So um, if we can get, let's, let's get started now and I'll start reading. Every friendship starts somewhere. Ours begins at Mary Hill Cobra's basketball tryouts in a small city in British Columbia where two rivers meet and become one. The coach blows his whistle and the drills begin. The kid in the yellow shirt is the only one that's shorter than me. What if I'm the worst player? I dribble, I pass, I shoot baskets, I block shots, I make the first string. The short kid is the worst player. His name is Terry Fox. The coach says wrestling might be a better sport for him to try. But if Terry continues to come to practice, the coach won't cut him from the team. I shouldn't be glad that I'm better than Terry, but I am. The next day, the phone rings. It's Terry. Hi, Doug. Want to play one-on-one? -on -one? I need to work on my game. Nah, I can't. I'm busy, I say. But I'm not really busy. I just don't want to play with the worst player on the team. A week later, Terry's still calling. This guy just won't give up. And I like to win, so I say yes. School ends, but all summer long, Terry and I practice. Terry learns to keep his head up, stay low, step back, fake. Terry's not so bad. He's funny. He likes science. Best of all, he loves basketball too. Even though I beat him every game, he never complains. By the time school starts, Terry is good enough to be on the roster. One of the 12 best players on the team. And I have a new best friend. Before long, we're in high school. Terry grows taller than me. Now when we play one-on-one, -on -one, he beats me 21 to nothing. I don't mind losing to Terry, though. Well, maybe just a little bit. Terry and I don't hang out much anymore. He's busy with his new basketball teammates, going to parties, and hanging out with friends. I'm busy, too, training for the biggest cross-country race of my life, the Provincial Championships. Cross-country is a sport that Terry doesn't like. Maybe it's because he's always far behind me. The night before the championship, my mind is spinning. What if I start too fast and lose steam at the end? Or hang back too long? What if I'm the slowest runner? Bring, bring, the phone startles me. It's Terry. Good luck tomorrow, he says. Just do your best, Doug, one step at a time. All through the race, Terry's voice echoes in my head. I win the second place medal. When university starts, Terry and I drive to the campus in his old beat-up car. Over the rattle of the muffler, Terry tells me his knee is hurting, probably from basketball practice on the hard gym floor. He doesn't want the coach to know. A few weeks later, Terry can barely walk, so he goes to the hospital. When I visit Terry the next day, I see tears rolling down his face. He has a rare type of cancer. They're going to amputate his leg. Terry is the best athlete I know. What can he do with only one leg? But Terry says not to feel sorry for him. Losing his leg is just a new challenge. After his operation, he shows me a magazine article about a guy with one leg who ran the New York City Marathon. Maybe I'll run across Canada, he says. I believe him. Terry steps... Uh, stays at the hospital while he learns to walk with his prosthesis. 
He looks like a bionic man, all fiberglass and steel where the rest of his leg used to be. At first, Terry practices walking with two crutches, then one crutch, then just a cane. One day, when I'm bringing him some schoolwork, he surprises me at the elevator, empty hands raised in victory. How'd you walk here, I asked. One step at a time, he says with a grin. The months speed by with treatments at the cancer clinic. As soon as Terry is finished with the treatments, he starts weight training to build a bit of the strength up. Playing wheelchair basketball helps too. Sometimes we race up the pine tree covered mountain, Terry in his wheelchair and me on foot. I always give him a head start. He says hearing my footsteps behind him makes him push harder. Seeing Terry in front of me makes me push harder too. Terry tells me a secret. He wants to run across Canada to raise money for cancer research. Will you help me train? I tell him to start slow, run a little farther each day, give his body time to recover. In a year or two, he'll be ready. But it's just, just not Terry's body that has to adapt to running. His, his artificial leg does too. Terry and his prosthesis, a person who makes uh, artificial limbs, get to work. They start with a regular artificial leg for walking. Fiberglass bucket, bucket, metal shaft, springs, gears, foot made of wood and rubber. They add special parts for running. Steel hinge for the knee, belt to attach the leg, elastic strap to pull the leg forward. Still, the heavy artificial leg moves too slowly, so Terry adjusts his gait. One, two steps with his good leg while the artificial leg swings forward. Even with the new leg, running is very painful for Terry, but that doesn't stop him. Terry runs at night under the warm glow of the stars. Some nights I run with him, some nights he runs all by himself. Hop hop on his left leg, long step with his right. By the end of the summer, Terry is running 8 kilometers a day. I ask him if he wants to enter a race with me. When he tells me to enter him in the shorter distance, I push him. You can almost run that far now. Why don't you run the longer distance? It will be a bigger challenge. For a few minutes, Terry doesn't say a word. Then he answers, okay, Doug, I'll do it. The 28 kilometer race is grueling. The course is steep and along a busy highway. I finish eighth, one of my best times. Terry comes in last, grinning from ear to ear. The crowd cheers. That's my best friend, I shout. If it's the truth, it do, it's not really bragging. We begin planning for Terry's cross-country run. It'll start in St. John's, Newfoundland next spring. To make it back home to British Columbia before winter, Terry will have to run a marathon every day. 200 marathons in a row. No one else in the world has ever run that far on one leg. Terry trains even harder. Every day he runs. He never thinks about how far he has to go. He just takes one step at a time. To the corner, to the stop sign, to the tree. Nothing will stop him from running. Not the flu, not the blisters, not his leg bleeding. When I try to convince Terry to take a day off to rest his injuries, he gets mad. We argue, he keeps running. A few months before the run, I start to have second thoughts. I'm supposed to drive the van, get Terry water and food, keep track of how far, run he, how, how far he runs each day, talk to reporters and collect money. How will I do all of that? I can't talk to reporters. I don't know what to do if Terry gets hurt. Again and again, I ask Terry to find some, someone else to go with him. Soon Terry loses patience with me. He stomps towards me. You're my best friend. You have to go with me. Remember, take it one step at a time. Terry looks so different now, strong and powerful. If Terry can do this, I can do this. When spring arrives, Terry is ready. 
so am I. We pick up the brand new camper van that will be our home for the next five months. It has everything we need. A fridge, a stove, stereo, beds, stinky chemical toilet. We load the cupboards with all of Terry's favorite foods. Cereal, oranges, chocolate chip cookies, canned spaghetti, baked beans, peanut butter and jelly. We gather all of Terry's running gear. Eight pairs of running shoes, five white t-shirts, four pairs of gray shorts, three artificial legs, one lucky sock. Our great adventure begins in a large city in Newfoundland where the island coastline meets the strong rolling tides. Side by side, we stand on the rocky shore. Terry dips his artificial leg into the swirling water. He turns to look up at the steep hill ahead. Just do your best, Terry, I smile, one step at a time. Then he starts to run. So that's the end. Um, thank you very, very much for um, listening to me read uh, uh, Terry Fox and Me. Um, I think it's a great story. And so thank you so much also on behalf of our family and the Terry Fox Foundation for all that you do in keeping Terry's dream alive. Thanks again and goodbye.